He lost, and everyone remembers the fact that he swam 20 lengths of the pool a couple of hours or so after the fight. Such was the energy that he had left. It was a disgrace. The press never forgave him, the public never forgave him. As far as they were concerned, Bugner was tainted. He didn't fight again until October of 1976, and he then fought the upcoming heavyweight hope, and a man at least had tried to do something when he met Ali a few months previously. That man was Richard Dunn, now the British, Commonwealth and European heavyweight champion. And this crowd had a fever pitch of excitement as this triple championship gets underway and over goes down in the first six seconds. One right hand. The champion on the floor in the first six seconds. Bugner going all out for him in the opening minutes. really can't miss him and he's putting the palm of his hand into Dunn's face Harry Gibbs tells him off Dunn trying to find some semblance of defense and a little bit of attack but they're just letting the punches come from the shoulder have recovered his wits. Titles back, he said, and I've done it. And he showed all the pent up anger of those months and months out of the ring and exploded the lot on the jaw of Richard Dunn to win three titles British, Commonwealth, and European in as sensational a fashion as you could imagine. Well, what a way to finish, as they say. A one-round demolition of Richard Dunn. Well, from that point, Joe drifted in and out of boxing. He went to L.A., he came back to Britain, and, of course, he ended up in Australia, where he enjoyed something of an Indian summer, taking care of a few useful Americans, the likes of Greg Page, David Bay, and James Quick Tillis. But, of course, if you remember, it all ended in October of 87 at the hands of our beloved Frank Bruno, who stopped him in eight. Joe left the world of boxing with a 61-12-1 record with little respect, but let's remember he went the distance twice with Muhammad Ali, we all know how good he was, and Joe Frazier. And let's remember he got stopped three times in 74 contests. I'll leave you with that thought. That's all from this edition of Ringside Superbouts. Join me next week where we'll start an in-depth look at a favourite welterweight, the Fen Tiger, Dave Boyd Green. See you then.
Off a bit far. Well, what a way to finish, as they say. A one-round demolition of Richard Dunn. Well, from that point, Joe drifted in and out of boxing. He went to LA, he came back to Britain, and of course he ended up in Australia, where he enjoyed something of an Indian summer, taking care of a few useful Americans, the likes of Greg Page, David Bay, and James Quick Tillis. But of course, if you remember, it all ended in October of 87, at the hands of our beloved Frank Bruno, who stopped him in eight. Joe left the world of boxing with a 61-12-1 record, 
with little respect. But let's remember, he went the distance twice with Muhammad Ali. We all know how good he was. And Joe Frazier. And let's remember, he got stopped three times in 74 contests. I'll leave you with that thought. That's all from this edition of Ringside Superbouts. Join me next week, where we'll start an in-depth look at a favourite welterweight, the Fen Tiger, Dave Boyd-Green. See you then.